we'll talk about uh, capybara testing for Java uh, from Java developers perspective. So, okay. So, so today we're going to talk about uh, capybara testing from Java developers perspective. Uh, so both Sean and I are uh, Java developers at PayPal and sometimes the feature we uh, created for PayPal uh, will affect tens of flows and uh, we need to write hundreds of end-to-end -end test cases to cover this, uh, this uh, flows to make sure nothing is broken. So uh, there is a, a Java automation framework called uh, C-Lion and although we are Java developers, we don't really like that framework because uh, if we do uh, write the test cases in Java and Java is a compiled language so you have to make a change, compile it and run it so you cannot really like add a breakpoint somewhere and just uh, add more lines of code to see how it works and uh, continue running the code it's not so easy for debugging and we want something that is a uh, REPL and uh, another thing is Java code is not so uh, reviewable by the product owners uh, so they create this uh, user stories for us and we, we, we want to have something that is like English so uh, they can review these test cases uh, to uh, like see if the, the, the feature is properly uh, uh, delivered and the last thing is uh, Java is kind of verbose for testing purpose uh, so uh, you need a proper IDE to write Java code uh, we, we don't uh, really want to have IDE when you uh, write test cases so uh, because of the, these reasons we decided to uh, use Ruby with Capybara to help us on the functional testing uh, just in case if you don't know what is a uh, Capybara. Uh, this is a capybara. Uh, <laughs> it's about this big, and they are very heavy. Yeah, I read it on Wikipedia. I think they are correct. <laughs> and here is a picture of two capybaras hugging each other, and here is a picture of a capybara hugging a cat. So, uh, so what is Capybara actually? So, uh, basically, Capybara is a Ruby library that you can use to simulate how an end user interacts with your web application. So, uh, here are some examples. So, if you want to open up a browser and visit some URL, uh, you can use the visit command here, uh, and you can also click on the links by using the click command. And uh, you can also like fill in text boxes uh, with uh, Capybara and interact with uh, radio buttons, select boxes. Uh, they are very convenient. They support all kind of uh, op user operations. And you can query if the web page have some element. So you can add this page has content something at the end of the test case to verify if the test case is successful uh, and then the domain specific language we're using here uh, is RSpec uh, it is a, a behavior driven development tool for Ruby uh, we also use Cucumber in some other projects but, uh, but mostly we are using uh, RSpec for our, for our test cases and uh, here, here is an example of uh, how uh, how uh, aspect plus a capybara, a capybara script look like. So first, uh, we have something called a feature. So in this test, uh, in this example, the feature is a user login flow, and inside the feature, we can define multiple scenarios. So the first scenario, so the scenarios I have here is. As a user, I should be able to uh, log in to my account. So these uh, scenarios are like the uh, user stories created by product owners. And inside the scenario, we define the steps to, uh, to verify the, the scenario. So first, uh, so 
because what we need to do is to do a login, right? So first, uh, we open up the PayPal uh, website and uh, click on login and fill in the email address and password and click on login again. And after you successfully logged in, uh, we will see a welcome message. So uh, then the test case passes. So it is very, so if you look at this script, it's just like uh, English and it's very clear, it's very simple. Even the product owners who doesn't really code, they can understand what this means, and they can use this to uh, as acceptance criteria for the uh, features they want us to uh, deliver. Uh, so, so I just just run a demo of what this uh, script is doing. So first, it's open up the browser and visiting the PayPal web page, and clicks on login and fill in password, and after successfully log in, uh, uh, after we see the backup message, the test case passes, uh, just like this. Okay, so uh, then we created this thing called Autobot. So what is Autobot? It's basically uh, aspect with Capybara plus PayPal capabilities, and it's also REPL, so it's very easy to create new test cases, de uh, debugging test cases with uh, our Autobot framework. So Autobot uh, basically have four parts. Uh, the first one is uh, acceptance. So basically, in acceptance, you would you can define uh, the flows and steps of the test cases, uh, like how how you're gonna do express checkout or how you're gonna do onboarding, uh, stuff like this. And the next part is uh, seed files. So for seed files, uh, they're the test data we have. Uh, they are. Things like test accounts and uh, expected contents are stored in the seed files. And uh, for different countries, we have different seed files. So, uh, so we, we can use the same test script uh, for different countries just by selecting different set of uh, seed files. And then we add uh, a lot of PayPal specific helper functions, uh, functions like to help you to log into your PayPal account, to uh, edit your PayPal account, and some uh, admin operations. And we also add support for uh, REST, RPC, and database operations. Uh, so it, it is very easy to, to call the uh, PayPal REST APIs with Autobot, and you can insert, validate, and uh, update your database through Autobot easily. And I'm going to show some demos. Uh, hi, now I'm going to show you some demos to show you why we really love Capybara. So for the first video. Um, here I will show you how we used to write tests in Java. So this is uh, a code in uh, CLIM framework, our PayPal framework. So as you can see, this is a very complicated looking piece of code, but actually it does very simple things. It just uh, go to PayPal website, uh, check for some elements, and then interact with the website. Okay, so now let's run the code to see how it goes. So as you can see, uh, similar to Kabira, it also opened a website and then you will try to visit the URL and interact with the page. So, okay, uh, looks like the test failed, it doesn't do anything. It's because I forgot to click on the login button. So now I need to get the ID of the button and then stop the test, go back to the code, add the declaration for the login button. And then after that, I will need to go down and add the code that actually clicks on the button. Now that I fix the code, I will run it again and uh, hope that it will work. Let's see. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so it opens the page, but it looks like it still doesn't do anything. Uh, it looks like I add the uh, click on button in the wrong place. Uh, I check for the content before I click on button. So now again, I need to stop the test, move the login button piece of code around, and then actually I need to add a light way for the button to show up. And now that I uh, hope I fix that, I need to run it again, hope that it works this time. Is this like the compilation or is it? Yeah, it's compile and then run. Oh, you know, but, but the, the lag between the, the, the screen and the, the browser popping up? Uh, Actually, I think it waits for the browser to be ready. I'm not sure what it does. Anymore. Okay, so it looks like the test passed. So, okay, so now that you see how we used to do it in Java, now I will show you how we write and debug our code uh, with uh, Autobot. Uh, so here I will do the same thing. I have the PayPal website. Uh, then the test will fill in the email and password. So here's the code. And yeah, it will try to do the same thing as the Java version. So now I will try to run the code. And as you can see, it opens a new browser. And again, I discover that the test failed because I forgot to click on the login button. So now what I'm going to do is I go back to the code. And I will add a breakpoint to the code and will try to uh, fix it interactively. So now I save the code and run it again. It will stop at the line by not try. Yeah, and it stopped here. Then now I can uh, experiment with the code. I can try to click on the login button. Okay, so it looks good. Now I can continue with the test case. So you see the improvements. Uh, so first of all, um, in Java, it's very verbose. Uh, you need to have a lot of uh, uh, code to define all the page elements, and then very long methods to interact with the elements. And uh, also another thing is uh, in uh, Capybara, we have the repo uh, in which I can test and write the code interactively. So it uh, makes me, uh, it uh, costs less time to fix the code. Um, okay, so another feature that we add to Autobot is uh, this one which I'm going to show. So testing is quite easy when you have a simple page, but it gets more complicated when you use a lot of Ajax and your JavaScript calls um, serve some web server and then the server send back some data. So it's really hard to know what's going on unless you can see all the HTTP requests and response. So to deal with this, we use uh, Firebug, which is a plugin for Firefox. Um, so now to enable uh, Firebug, I just need to add this one line, require drivers firefox.rb. And then now when I run the code, it will show a browser and as you can see, uh, Firebug is enabled. It's the uh, orange thing in the uh, left, uh, in the right corner. And below, you can see all the HTTP requests and response of the page. This was very helpful in one of our projects where we need to test that the JavaScript in the page actually send a request to one of our checking server. So, uh, use, uh, so with Firebug, we can export all this information into a JSON file, and then we can use that information to test if the JavaScript actually do the right thing. So to sum up why we love Kabira, the first thing is the repo. As you can see, it helps us to write code very easily. And the next thing is it's really easy and fast to write. Uh, in Capybara, there's only a few comments like visit, uh, click on button, expect page to have some elements. So it's uh, really easy to write. You don't need some fancy IDE to write the code. 
and the last thing is very readable. Uh, so that concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening. And now, if you have any questions. Actually, the script I have written is uh, actually that script. It uh, will um, set up the Firefox to add the plugin into the. Oh, so it's a custom script. Yes, it's, it's my script. Oh, okay, okay. Are you gonna open source that script? Uh, actually, you can you, uh, you can Google that, but uh, oh, okay. it's not very. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, sorry, I noticed that like all the tests were running against the live PayPal. You guys also use Capybara to uh, do like free shipping automated tests. Um, so usually in PayPal we test in our test environment. We have uh, some uh, machines that runs uh, a, a version of the PayPal website is uh, should be updated. So we test against that. We do not test against the real PayPal website. Have you guys tried using uh, building custom functions for Capybara to, like, if you've got features that you regularly test so that you can just plug in one line into your Capybara tests and that feature will always be tested the same way instead of you having to write out the tests every single time? Do you guys have experience with that in your setup in PayPal, or have you gotten that far yet? Uh, yes, we did that. So uh, we have some uh, basic page like login, which uh, most of the test cases go through. So we have uh, have uh, methods for that. So and for something like uh, check out flows, is uh, very common in PayPal. So we also have uh, some help functions for that. Do you make use of logging very much? along with your capybara so that besides the feedback that capybara gives you you can also look at your logs i mean coming from java i assume you guys are used to looking at reams of logs for stuff like that it, for helping with debugging figuring out what went wrong um. as an alternative to the firefox plugin that you just demonstrated which is very new by the way uh, thank you. So uh, in uh, Capybara, we have uh, the screenshot. It uh, automatically takes right. the screenshot where it fails. So um, we very up. We mostly rely on that. Another thing is, uh, uh, for me, uh, I don't want to read too many logs, so I write my own logs. So for most of the helper functions, I write some simple steps that, okay, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here, but it's not very like full, like uh, too many logs. It's just basic logging to see. Okay, there's a question at the back. Sure. You mentioned the part of having experience in Capybara is that non-technical people like project managers can read the code. Do you have any project managers who read your test code? <laughs> well, I don't know. We do have. Yeah, yeah. This is so easy for non-technical people. And non-technical people better read this test. Why is it not? So we do have some product owners who's uh, reviewing this. They, they didn't write this kind of test, but they, they can review this test cases to, to see if the feature they want are properly delivered. So, but they don't write this test cases. Uh, yeah, Uh, most of them you just need to 
way for some text to pop up, that's what the user see, right? Uh, basically, when you test with Kaveo, you try to simulate what the user, how the user interact with the page. So most likely, uh, when something show up, then you just need to wait for the that um, element to be present on the page. So that's the basic usage of uh, Capybara. Actually, uh, Capybara can inject JavaScript in the. Uh, it can run some JavaScript code inside the browser. So if uh, your code has uh, something like uh, when you done you when you download in some data, you set some variables, and in your Capybara you can check for that variable. That was more a follow-up to the non-technical users Ruby code. I mean, Ruby has the advantage of being so big and if you do it nicely, your business analyst, uh, maybe not the end owner of the product, like the business person in a suit way up top, who they agree, but the other ones will. In my project, we have business analysts that read most of our code when they're confirming that things are working and there's a bug, because Ruby is so nice, they can follow it as long as we use the right abstractions. So I think it's a good thing to think about that. I agree with it here. Yeah. So basically, if you have a business analyst that is sufficiently frustrated with the uh, bug, and he finds that the code is actually easy to read, then he often points you in the right direction how to fix it. I'm not recommending that you frustrate them, but... <laughs> <laughs> I agree with the guy who agrees with it yeah. Like, we have our business analyst actually reads our source code sometimes. A lot of times, it's when someone reports a bug, and she can't see the view layer, like the button is missing or something she read. And find that there's an if conditioner blocking it. And Joanna was like, hey, why do you write an if statement to block this bit here? Like, you know, like it's sufficiently readable enough to read, like, oh, if something's happening, block this. It's like, oh yeah, I think that's a wrong business logic to block. So, like, she helps us a lot by reading our source code. Try that with your five three patterns in Java. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I find it interesting that you um, that you test for uh, the JavaScript to make a call to your server uh, using your feature test. Uh, I'm curious why you chose to use a feature test to test for that instead of maybe writing like a, a Jasmine spec to make sure that at a unit level you're making that call when that function executes. <laughs> Uh, so you mean uh, why don't we write a unit test to test the JavaScript? Yeah, for like to make sure that uh, your function is actually calling out to. Okay, let me rewind back. So like when I think of like what a feature test is doing, it's trying to drive like interaction with the page, uh, and something like uh, testing for an HTTP call seems like a unit level test, uh, and instead maybe you'd want to test to see like uh, can the user interact with the page in the way that I would expect that they could. And so I'm curious as to why you're testing for the, the call to be made and the response to come in, instead of like maybe an interaction. Uh, the thing is, uh, for us, we don't own that uh, piece of code, so it's hard for us to oh, okay. that unit test for that. So cool. But we need, we still need to make sure that it works. So we need to try that. Gotcha. So. Yeah. So you can't write the unit test. Because uh, in paper we don't own as uh, for some team are responsible for some piece of course, so we cannot uh, do whatever we want with uh, those pieces. Gotcha. Okay, I'm going to wrap up the discussion at this point for now, but if you have more questions, please approach the speakers later on afterwards. Um, would you be willing to share the slides and the video, uh, maybe in the meetup group, for the sake of those in the back who couldn't quite see the code and the demonstration just now? Mm, okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, up to you guys, uh, but maybe that would be helpful for those who are a little bit further away. Uh, then maybe they can ask you more questions that way as well. Thank you so much. Shall we have a next